when we accidentally touch something hot, the heat sensation travels instantly along sensory nerves, and the impulse to jerk our hand away travels instantly back along motor nerves. The nervous system coordinates these kinds of quick response actions. However, another type of coordination is required to regulate our metabolic activities, such as causing our heart to beat faster when we're afraid, which prepares us for quick action if necessary, or maintaining proper glucose levels in our blood, which requires monitoring 24 hours a day, day after day. This type of coordination is performed by the endocrine system. The endocrine system works to produce a condition called homeostasis, literally standing still or stationariness. In this context, it is used to describe the proper balance of chemicals and other substances in the body and the harmonious functioning and coordination of all the various bodily processes and organ systems. The endocrine system helps maintain this state of balance in the body by performing a regulatory role for all the other organ systems. The endocrine system consists primarily of glands and endocrine tissue inside other organs, like the pancreas, that secrete hormones directly into our bloodstream. Hormones are chemical messengers that travel through our circulatory system to other parts of the body in order to control or regulate a body process, such as growth, temperature control, or water retention. In some cases, the hormone targets a specific organ or tissue. In other cases, the hormone's effect is more general. Some hormones stimulate other glands to release yet other hormones. Hormones work by only binding to those cells which have appropriate receptors on their cell walls. Kind of like that child's toy in which holes and blocks have different shapes and you must match the correct block with the appropriate hole. Once the hormone binds to its target cell and delivers its message, the cell goes to work and does whatever it's been ordered to do. There are three classes of hormones produced by the endocrine system. Amino acid derivatives, peptide hormones, and lipid derivatives. Control of the endocrine system occurs in two ways, directly by a change in homeostasis and indirectly by the hypothalamus, a part of our brain belonging to the nervous system. Both methods make use of a control mechanism called negative feedback. For example, low calcium levels trigger the release of parathyroid hormone, or PTH, from the parathyroid glands. The hormone then binds to its target cells, in this case cells in our kidneys, with the result that more calcium is reabsorbed back into our bloodstream instead of being passed out of our body in our urine. High calcium levels, on the other hand, trigger the release of calcitonin from the thyroid gland with the result that our kidneys absorb more calcium and discharge it from our body in our urine. In both cases, something negative occurs, either too low a level of calcium or too high a level of calcium, and the communication or feedback of these negative events to the endocrine system triggers a reaction from the endocrine system that results in homeostasis being reestablished. Endocrine activity is also controlled indirectly by the hypothalamus, part of the nervous system located in the diencephalon or interbrain. This is where the nervous system and the endocrine system shake hands as it were. The hypothalamus is involved in the control of our body temperature, 
emotions, and sexual activity, among many other things. These activities are initiated by the hypothalamus based on negative feedback. The hypothalamus accomplishes this in three ways. One, the hypothalamus regulates the anterior pituitary gland by stimulating or inhibiting the production of pituitary hormones. Two, the hypothalamus releases hormones directly into the circulatory system through the posterior pituitary gland. And three, the hypothalamus controls the endocrine cells of the adrenal medulli, which produce a very important hormone called adrenaline. The pituitary gland is about the size of a pea and is known as the master gland because it regulates all the other glands and tissues that comprise the endocrine system. It is located at the base of the brain and is connected to the hypothalamus, which in turn regulates its activity. The pituitary gland has two lobes, the posterior lobe and the anterior lobe. The anterior pituitary gland is connected directly to the hypothalamus by a capillary network called the hypophysial portal system. Two types of regulatory hormones are produced by the hypothalamus and transported directly to the anterior pituitary gland, releasing hormones and inhibiting hormones. These hormones in turn regulate the production of hormones by the anterior pituitary gland. The hormones produced by the anterior pituitary gland include thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH which triggers the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormones, adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH stimulates secretion of hormones in the adrenal glands, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH stimulates sperm production in the male testes as well as estrogen hormone secretion and egg development in the female ovaries. Prolactin or PRL stimulates the formation of mammary glands in the female and production of milk. Luteinizing hormone or LH induces ovulation in females and stimulates estrogen and progesterone hormone secretion in preparation for pregnancy. In males, it stimulates the production of testosterone hormone in the testes. And growth hormone, or GH, targets cells in the liver which are involved in processing food, as well as stimulating cell growth and replication throughout the body. The posterior pituitary gland contains neuron cells that originate in the hypothalamus, and it releases two hormones that are produced in the hypothalamus. Antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, primarily targets cells in the kidneys and works to maintain a proper balance of electrolytes in the bloodstream, but is also involved in maintaining proper blood volume and proper blood pressure. Oxytocin helps prepare the uterus during the last stage of pregnancy for labor and delivery. After delivery, oxytocin is also involved in producing milk in the mammary glands. Most of the hormones we've examined so far are known as regulatory hormones. That is, they are involved in regulating hormone production in other glands and organs. The hypothalamus releases hormones that regulate the production of other hormones in the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland releases hormones which regulate the release of yet other hormones in yet other glands and organs. Now let's examine these other glands and organs that make up the endocrine system. In addition to the pituitary gland, the other glands of the endocrine system include the pineal gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, thymus gland, and adrenal glands. 
The pineal gland is located in the center of the brain next to the thalamus and produces a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin production peaks during the night and decreases during the day, leading scientists to think that it may be involved in the maintenance of our internal clock, which regulates sleeping and waking hours. The thyroid gland is located in the neck below the thyroid cartilage or Adam's apple and produces three hormones thyroxin or TX which is also known as T4 triiodothyronine or T3 and calcitonin or CT thyroxin and triiodothyronine together are called thyroid hormones and are stored in the thyroid follicles when stimulated by thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH from the anterior pituitary gland these hormones are released into the bloodstream and affect almost every cell in our body where they increase the rate at which oxygen and nutrients are converted into energy and heat thyroid hormones are also essential for the normal childhood development of the skeletal muscular and nervous systems. The thyroid gland releases iodine to synthesize these hormones and a diet poor in iodine can lead to serious health and development problems. One consequence of this is an enlarged thyroid gland called a goiter. This is why iodine is added to table salt in the United States. This provides about three times the minimum daily requirement of dietary iodine. Calcitonin is released by the thyroid gland in response to too high a level of calcium in our bloodstream. Calcitonin targets our kidneys, causing them to discharge more calcium into the urine, and our bones causing them to remove calcium from circulation and store it. The effects of these actions is to lower the concentration of calcium in our blood. The smallest glands in the endocrine system, the parathyroid glands, are located on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland and produce parathyroid hormone, or PTH. This is the other hormone involved in regulating calcium levels. PTH does the opposite of calcitonin, triggering cells in our kidneys to retain calcium and return it or reabsorb it into our blood. The thymus gland is located behind the sternum in the thoracic cavity and produces several hormones called thymosins. The thymus reaches its largest size at puberty and then gradually shrinks as we grow older. Thymosins are involved in the development and maintenance of the immune system. The thymus also produces T cells. The T is for thymus that circulate in our bloodstream where they play an important role in our body's immunological response to disease. The adrenal glands are located on the top of each kidney. The outer layer is called the adrenal cortex. The inner core is called the adrenal medulla. Stimulated by adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, released from the anterior pituitary gland, the adrenal cortex produces over two dozen hormones called corticosteroids. These hormones are categorized in three groups. Mineralocorticoids, including aldosterone, which regulate the excretion of sodium and potassium by the kidneys. Androgens, which include the male and female sex hormones, testosterone and estrogen and glucocorticoids, including cortisone and hydrocortisone, which are involved in regulating cellular metabolism and, as anti-inflammatories, suppress the immune system, which is why we apply ointments containing cortisone, for example, on allergic rashes. <sighs> the adrenal medulla is under the direct control of the hypothalamus and, in response to its stimulation, produces the hormones adrenaline, and noradrenaline. When we are frightened, our blood pressure rises, our heart rate increases, and blood is pumped to our skeletal muscles so we can run or fight in response. 
This results from the release of adrenaline and noradrenaline, which is why we call such an experience an adrenaline rush. Endocrine cells in the pancreas form clusters called the islets of Langerhans, after a German scientist named Paul Langerhans, who discovered them. Each islet contains two types of endocrine cells, alpha cells and beta cells. These cells produce two very important hormones. Alpha cells produce glucagon and beta cells produce insulin. These two hormones regulate blood glucose levels. When blood glucose levels rise higher, the beta cells release insulin. When blood glucose levels fall lower, the alpha cells release glucagon. Diabetes mellitus is a disease in which the body either doesn't produce enough insulin, type 1 diabetes, or has decreased sensitivity to insulin, type 2 diabetes. This results in elevated levels of blood glucose which, without treatment, can lead to serious complications including coma and death. As we have seen, our body's endocrine glands and tissues work behind the scenes, initiating complex chemical interactions to stimulate and coordinate a wide range of cellular and organ processes, from metabolism to reproduction. And all of this goes on every day, year after year, without any conscious control as we go about our lives.